The next demo scene will demonstrate transactions or between companies. Imagine, and very typical, organizations consist of several companies but may not have the equivalent number of accounting and administrative teams. Intercompany functionality lets you do business with the subsidiary and internal partner organizations in the same way as you would engage with external vendors and, and customers. So in this scenario, we will create the purchase invoice and we will do that in the headquarters company. Then I'll log in in company one to approve the transaction. We'll post the journal entry while still logged into company one and then review the impact on the ledger. So the scenario is I'm a parent company. I receive an invoice from a vendor for consulting services. Some of the costs are incurred by the parent, whereas some of the costs will be deferred to the subsidiary, in our case, Camp Company One. So I'm in as a business manager, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new purchase invoice right off the uh, home page. I'll select the vendor that sent me the invoice, first up consultants, and with the line type set as GL account, I'm going to go ahead and select the consulting fees. I'll enter a quantity of one, and that cost uh, was $1,000. Now I have a second line item, right? It was going to be incurred by the subsidiary company. So I'll select, again, the same GL account consulting fees. In this case, uh, $750 will be billed to the partner type as I select the uh, partner code to company one. And then I'll post the transaction. And to show you that, I'll navigate to the general ledger entries and the drill down capabilities to see all of the debit and the credit and what's happening. And so you can see here uh, on line one, the GL account for consulting fees, we credited $650, uh, $750. And then, of course, I've got a debit for the headquartered company for the total invoice amount. And then I've got a liability of 1750, of which I'm going to incur back the highlighted item you see here, the due from from company one. So next, I'm going to go ahead and approve that transaction. So again, I'm logging back into a different company. I'm in company one. And instead of just letting transactions flow freely, we want to make sure we review those. So I'll select in the search menu and I'll search on the intercompany inbox. And I see that there's the transaction. And I'll look at the details of that, and I see this $750. So, okay, I know what that is. I will accept that. And now that is, I can close that window. And now I need to go ahead and post the journal entry. So, again, I'm still logged into company one. I'll search on the intercompany journal, and we'll go ahead and post that entry. And now I'm done. And then the last step, of course, let me just scroll down. I'll show you the impact of it. And I think one way to simply navigate it is I've set up some of my favorite accounts, uh, both the AR and AP, both the company as well as the do to do from. And you see here, if I drill into that balance, here's that $750. And again, I can navigate to the ledger entries of that account. And so again, showing you the capabilities of how to do intercompany transactions and the benefit to the company is to be able to minimize errors with a single entry and then post efficient track transactions across subsidiary companies.